Scootily doodly do, it's time for another Welsh review. Scootily doodly do do. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Welsh Review. We're your hosts, Sam and Stefan. Thanks for tuning in. Mm-hmm. What are we watching today? So, today, Sammy, we're talking about Jungle Land, mm-hmm. right? Starring Charlie Hanam, right? You might know him as Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy. Uh, he's playing Stanley Kaminsky, and then you have Jack O'Connell as his brother, Walter Lyon Kaminsky, and you might know Jack O'Connell from the film Unbroken um, and The Money Monster. Uh, and then you have Fran Kranz as Buck. Fran Kranz was also in You Might Be the Killer, and he was in Cabin in the Woods as the guy who smoked pot all the time. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you have Jonathan Majors, right? Jonathan Majors is hitting it huge. He's coming off of Love Ca- Lovecraft Count- County Country. Okay. Right, that new HBO show. He's the main star in that. And he just he's got seen, cast right? in Ant Man three, okay. so he's he's blowing making up. huge strides. Right? He yeah, he's blowing up. He plays Pepper in this, right? Oh like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a little salty. Ha! <laughs> 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 and then uh, <laughs> not bad stuff. Thank, thank you. Then you have Jessica Barden as Sky, uh, John Cullum as Yates. Margaret Devine as Mother McGinty, uh, Jerry Shea as Stepfather McGinty, and this was written by Theodore Bresman, David Bransom Smith, and Henry Winkler's son, the Fonz's son, Max Winkler, and it was also directed by Max Winkler. Is, do you think Max Winkler is like Maximum Winkler? Like, hey. yeah, like, yo, this guy's got more Winkler in him, you know what I mean? Max, I hope he has Max more Winkler. Winkler! Oh. All right, go ahead. Son of the Fonz. Yeah. Um, so that's that's who's in it. That's who's behind the camera and who wrote it. Um, and uh, this movie, right, I found out about it through Instagram because I, uh, I follow um, Jake Johnson, the guy who plays Nick from New Girl. Okay. I guess he's friends with Max Winkler. He's like, hey, check out this thing my buddy did. That's cool. It's on the trailer. Yeah, no, but, like, this movie it has, like, a real, like, um, of mice and men kind of feel to it. Just yeah. because it's like two guys traveling together, right? And one is more competent than the other in, in most cases. But we can, we'll dive into that. But another thing I think is cool about this film is uh, we went to UMass Dartmouth, which is out in Eastern Mass, right? Mm-hmm. And is uh, close to New Bedford. This Parts of this film were filmed in New Bedford. Yeah, it starts in New Bedford. And then like when you had to go to a church uh, for... Well, I, had, I, had, I had a project... To do and basically, I had to go to this church that's in the film. Yeah, uh, it's like they it's ran not... by where we stood, and that was cool. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's it's a semi-local, well, not a local film, right? But they film some things in mass, which is you know always a plus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so this movie focuses on two brothers. One of them's a bare knuckle boxer. The other's kind of a low life. Um, but. You know, they they got the short end of the stick in life, right? They grew up in New Bedford, which is a very, you know, low-income city. Uh, And their mom died when they were young, and their father bailed on them. So, you know, as kids, the older brother, you know, who's more of a lowlife, took care of his brother. You know, like, even though he is, you know, a lowlife, he, you know, he does his best for his brother as much as he can. But... Uh, at that same time, he kind of relies on his brother now, who is a very talented boxer. Right. Um, but, you know, just as an example, um, the older brother, uh, the one from Sons of Anarchy. Stan. Stan. Uh, Stan, uh, like, basically lost their boxing license because he was trying to bribe refs. Uh, he's very much in with criminal, like, underground sort of organizations. He owes them a lot of money because he constantly takes out bets, uh, on his brother. Um, you know, in the past, I'm sure his brother would have lost, but, uh, also now his brother, like, you know, whenever he sees this guy show up, uh, you know, this, this, uh, Pepper, Pepper, the crime boss, um, you know, he throws fights. So in the beginning of the film, we see Lion, who's the younger brother, throw a fight that his brother had again gone to this to this crime boss to like take out money uh, on. You know, to to add to their stakes. Um, so uh, because Lion threw the match, um, 
they are now like indebted to Pepper, right? Because they don't have any money to pay him back. They don't, they don't have the money to even take out to take out the bet, and they already owed money to Pepper. Um, so they get matched up, uh, or not matched up, but they become responsible for bringing this girl Sky uh, to California. And at first, everything seems cool, right? Um, Stan is like, hey, we don't move girls, you know what I mean? Like, transport prostitutes. Which is basically what they thought they were being asked to do. And, you know, they're like, well, this isn't a prostitute, so don't worry. Like, you know, that's not what's happening here. You're not, this isn't like a sex trade thing. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they take it, right? They don't really have an option. Otherwise, they're kind of in deep crap with Pepper. And, you know, Pepper already tries to shoot them once before this, so. Uh, well, that's because they tried to bail on them. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, yeah. you, don't, you don't bail on Pepper. Nobody gets away from Pepper. No one gets away from Pepper. Um, so the two of them and Sky start traveling across the country to California to deliver this girl. Um, additionally, uh, I think Pepper set them up with a match at Jungle Land, which is like this bare knuckle boxing, uh, this big bare knuckle boxing rink in San Francisco. San Fran. Yeah. Uh, in San Fran. Um, as kind of like a reward, there's also some money in it for them. Uh, if they deliver this girl. Um, well, while they're traveling, this girl Sky gets in real close with Lion, right? She kind of uses him, uh, but, uh, well, yeah, uses him against Stan, uh, but at the same time is also kind of making Lion realize, like, hey, you don't have to do everything your brother tells you to. Like, you can think and act for yourself. Um, so there winds up being a lot of inter-conflict there. Uh, and then eventually we also find out that the person who they're delivering to is this guy named Yates. Uh, and Yates, like, if, if they thought Pepper was bad, Yates is like, you know, uh, controls like from Reno all the way over to Massachusetts kind of scary. You know what I mean? Like, they knew his name and he isn't even in the same fucking time zone. Like, no. so... <laughs> So, uh, you know, they're afraid. They're like, if we don't deliver this girl, Yates is going to come find us and kill us. Like, we don't have a say now. We need to do this. Uh, but because Sky's getting in close with Lion, there's, like, this inter-family division that's beginning to form because, you know, she's ob she obviously doesn't want to go back with this guy. You know, she's, she's trying to escape, too. Um, so... Basically, what winds up happening is you have uh, a whole bunch of stories going on at the same time. You have the story of Stan, who's trying to, you know, um, get out of uh, an impoverished life, right, uh, any way that he can, but he's also trying to look out for his brother the best that he can, um, even though to some extent he needs to use his brother to do that. Uh, Lion... He just wants to be cognitive enough to, like, live for himself. Um, he does like boxing, but he wants to open up a dry cleaning factor, uh, company. So he wants to also, you know, get out of poverty, but he doesn't want to be a boxer anymore. He wants to, he wants to do something else uh, and live just kind of like a peaceful life. Um, and this is in opposition to Stan, who wants to become rich off of his brother being a boxer and him yeah. being his trainer. Uh, and then you have Sky, who's trying to turn the two of them against each other so that she can escape, and, you know, completely justified in doing so. Like, uh, when, when you find out who Yates is, you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when you, like, in his reasoning why he wants yeah. Sky, it's uh, all the more terrifying. It definitely, uh, I would say it heightens the darkness in the film. Yeah. Right, because at first it's like, oh, okay, cool. It's just like a, a road movie, you know, in some kind of sense, right? It's yeah. A, it's a, a drama road film, but then it's also it like becomes real dark, real quick, right? Yeah. Like the longer you're on the road, the more you find out, the deeper you go. Yeah. You know, so that that part is kind of cool as it you know it slowly burns right down to the the finish. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about uh their like, portrayal of, like, people in poverty, you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, we haven't seen, like, 
anything ourselves in our life and obviously anywhere near where they were right. but like we you know like we grew up in Springfield we've seen we've seen poverty before like how do you think they portrayed it I think they did a good job you know I really I'm not saying like it, um, they committed to the roles they were given right and I think the acting is something that's very important in this movie like Charlie and Am right I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name but uh when he's given these smaller roles, right, like Stanley, right? Yeah. Like, he really embodies that. You're not rooting for Stanley. You hate Stanley, right? When I watched it, at least, yeah. I was like, one, even one of the characters says, you're a weasel, yeah. right? And it's like, that the, that character, Clem, uh, spelled it out perfectly. It's like, you are a weasel. Yeah. He is the weaseliest dude, you know? And, like, and he's real skinny, you know what I mean? It's not like, not just because he's athletic, but, like, you know, he says, you know, I've given up eating so you can eat, right? I mean, he's using that to pressure his brother to fight. Yeah. But, like... It's also true. It's also true. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, they're survivors or more like scavengers, right? They're picking off on things, you know, no one else is using. Like, they're living in a condemned or boarded up housing. Yeah, and they have to crawl through the window each right. day to get him out. So, I mean... um, They're doing a good job, but I think Max Winkler, the director has picked areas that showcase if you're going to if you want to survive you have to you know you got to do what to, you got to do yeah. right you have to be willing to uh, accept this is where I'm staying tonight you have to be able to accept I'm breaking into this so I have somewhere to sleep yeah. you have to accept I have to bring this girl to uh, you know this crime boss or I'm going to die yeah um, right so he uses i think yeah. uh, you know um, god uh, where where did we go to school? Uh, New Bedford. Bedford. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about he it. He uses the, like some of those neighborhoods, right? And I'm sure they are good in their own way, but he showcases the greedy side. And I think putting these guys in there because they both seem like character actors, you know, they they took to it. They communalized yeah. themselves to their surroundings. Um, so I definitely think that worked. I definitely think um, Jack O'Connell did a good job showing someone who's taken a lot of unnecessary blows right and hasn't gotten proper medical you know attention uh, yeah or treatment yeah you know or like somebody who's like you know if i was in college i would be trying to take it seriously because unfortunately it seems like and he he does this well on screen people don't appreciate what they have yeah right when they're not the ones in that position yeah right? and i just I made that sound more complicated. No, 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 no. Uh, but yeah, like, like they're you know these are these are the people like you were saying who are you know breaking their back just to survive. They're not breaking their back so that they can thrive. They're they're doing the most that they can just so that they can you know live day to day. Yeah. And you know they they live hand to mouth. So having the opportunity to go to college and they they talk about it in the film is basically a dream you know what i mean like that it's like it's like a far off not gonna happen but if i did you know i'd be giving it my all because they have to give it their all at everything they do and there's, there's just no in between i think um, one of the most heartbreaking scenes in that movie right one of the few prized things that lion has right is his dog ash yeah right and like th there's a point in time where someone offers the money for the dog yeah. right and at first it's like no but you know, they don't have the money. So behind Any money. Lion's back, Stan goes to those same people he sees walking down the street and sells the dog. Yeah. And it's like, that's the only thing aside from his brother that Lion's had, yeah. right? Like, of, of any worthwhile possession and as a friend, right? Because an animal, if you treat it with love and respect, it's going to love you rich, poor, whatever, you know? So, yeah. like, that was heartbreaking. Yeah, just as, like, a quick analysis of Stan... Um, and obviously, like, we don't get all of their backstory, right? But I think that the character really, and, you know, you're right, he is, he is a weasel, right? He, he is weaselly, but he also kind of needs to be, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, he messes up a lot, like, you know, he screws up a lot, and it screws over his brother, but what I, I don't know, what I see when I watch that character is, like, somebody who has, like, actually zero opportunities you know what i mean like has has very little and now 
whenever a new opportunity does arrive, he's kind of like broken, right? Like he can't, he can't accept, or how, what am I trying to say? He can't like act appropriately to, to achieve what he needs to do because he's always, um, going to the most severe place that he can to, to, um, to do what needs to get done, right? Like, he doesn't try to even think of an alternative to bring this girl because he's like, I can't let my brother get hurt. I can't die. Right. Um, you know, she, to him, is, is not what's important. So he's going to do what he needs to do to, like, you know, make what he cares about prosper. And there's only two things that he cares about, which is himself and his brother. Um, so, even though his character is kind of scuzzy, uh, I, I don't know, I really liked his character because I think that, like, do-or-die mentality uh, and that compassion for your own family is something that's... something that you don't really see done well in films, like, ever. There's like two or three other films that I've seen that do it this well. Um, and it shows, and it shows multiple times later on, we're not going to give anything away, but later on there's, you know, a really good scene that shows, you know, like just how far Stan is willing to go for his brother. There's also a couple of scenes that show how far Lion's willing to go for his. Um, and at the end of the day, that is what this movie is. It's a movie about two brothers, you know, putting everything that they have on the line to protect each other or to help each other. And that's that's kind of beautiful. It is. No, it really is. So, like, I, I, and I agree with you. While, while he, Stan might come off as a weasel, his intentions are pure. You know? Ish, just, yeah. Just, well, 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 at a baseline, right? At a yeah. baseline, it's like, I'm just trying to ensure my brother and I have the, a, a good chance at life, right? Yeah. Like, that's something everyone can, can touch on. Now, best intentions are always what paves the road to hell. You know what I yeah. mean? Everybody says they have the best intentions. doesn't mean it's always going to turn out that way. So, yeah. like, Charlie Hinnan, if he's able to, to you know, um, you know, execute that feeling while also being scuzzy, he's doing something really yeah, well. Yeah, he's doing his job, right? You know? Um, I think, I, I don't want to take away from Charlie Hinnan, but I do want to talk about uh, Jonathan Majors as Pepper, and then I do want to also talk about yeah. uh, Sky a minute. Uh, so, like, Jonathan Majors, Pepper is not necessarily, like, a huge role, right? Like, but, like, I feel, do you, did you think, like, the scenes he was on camera, right? Like, he played that crime boss, like, listen, man, it ain't my problem. You owe me. Therefore, you're going to do this, right? Yeah. Like, that whole, mid, like, cool but suave villainy. Well, I think that what Pepper does well, like, constantly, um, is that he doesn't, like, obviously he's going to get his way. That's, that's like, you know, part of the plot. Right. But he doesn't really seem like anything phases him. And that's kind of where, like, being in control and power, um can be pretty easily displayed, and it's it's very well uh, juxtaposed, right, or contrasted with um, Stan's character, who's like frantically trying to figure out how to how to how to either get out of or fix anything that Pepper wants him to do. Um, so I think that Pepper's character does very well because it you know it doesn't seem desperate ever. It's like, yo, this is going to happen. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So he he has control. You're right. He is suave. He doesn't need to he doesn't need to throw around his weight even though it seems like he pr you know, he easily could especially against these two characters, you know. Um so yeah, uh not a big role in the film, but I think that he's real good. Yeah. You know, I'd definitely like to see more... I'd like to see more Pepper, right? I don't know if this is something they'll continue into other things, but he's a character I would like to see more of. Yeah. You know, and I definitely hope uh, this means there'll be more of Jonathan Majors, you know, in, in film yeah. and in, in TV moving on. Uh, but another character just as important as the Kaminsky brothers, right? But Sky. Yeah. Right? Now, uh, Jessica Barden, I'm not sure how old she is, but she definitely seemed... 
to be like in what, like the late teens or, or early mid teens? Yeah, she's probably like nineteen, eighteen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Sky is this girl who is being transported to Yates, right? We talked about her a little bit earlier, um, but she is like also a tragic, frantic character, right? She ran away from this drug. Or I actually have no idea. I think he's like a prostitution dog food overlord because he has like <laughs> he's like if Dave's Soda and Pet Food City was mixed with like Scarface, Scarface, like low level opioid addiction. Yeah, Scarface. he talks about how he has like dog pet stores. <laughs> yeah, imagine that though. Dave Food Pet Food City. He's yeah. got dogs in cage. He's got chicks in cage. Yeah, just <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Uh, anyway, sorry, Dave. Yeah, sorry, Dave. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so that that's kind of what he is. He's like evil Dave, uh, and you know nobody wants that. Dave's a good guy, uh, and we're not trying to drag Dave's name through the dirt. Good, uh, we're proud of you, Dave. It's just You're just an awesome. exa- a business model yeah. example, right? So, like if crime was executed, but by using dog food supply. Anyway, we're talking too much about it. Go ahead. All right. So, anyways, this guy you know ran away from this dude. She doesn't want to be with like. Mr. Mr. Yates, um, and then she gets captured, and now she's being brought right back to him, and, you know, of course she's gonna try to escape, but she also helps the main characters, like, explore who they are, the other main characters explore who they are, while she is, you know, a very obviously broken herself, right, um, like, there's obviously parts where she's manipulating Lion, but at, at that same time, she is, she actually also cares about Lion. Yeah, know, like, she, as the, this goes on, right, she kind of, they kind of fall for each other in a way. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I don't, I don't have as much to say about Sky. They didn't delve too far into her background. Like, there, there's some stuff, but we can't really talk about it without giving away a lot of the plot. Right. Um... Her family are, like, very, very religious, and she is not, uh, not, (laughs) and they view her as, like, an impure, like, evil human, which is, you know, kind of contentious. So, yeah, Sky's life sucks. I do not wish that on my worst enemy. It's it's a real bad time, Uh, and if you watch the movie, you will understand why. Yeah. No, you definitely will. Like I always said, you know, the longer the movie plays, the darker it gets. Yeah. You know? Um, she is a really good character, though. No, she definitely, you know, she has a gravitas to her where it's like, oh, wow, you know, like, you know, young up-and-coming actress. You yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, again, hopefully we see some of these fresher faces in other projects as they yeah. go. Um, I also think, you know, Max Winkler right now, I've never heard of him until this, right? So maybe he's done other movies or he's been in the business longer. Or his dad's rich. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> like his dad totally is rich and opened some doors, right? Yeah. No one shuts the door on, hey, you know what I'm that's saying? Right. So, like, he's certainly making a name for himself, right? It, or it seems like he's making a name for himself. Yeah. Definitely it helps who your dad is yeah. uh, in his case. Uh, but, you know, if he can make, like, these smaller films with more emotion and, like, you know, pack more of a punch, then, like, I don't know, he might be a storyteller worth paying attention to. Yeah, and some closing thoughts, uh, at least for me, and then, you know, obviously whatever you got. Um, I think that this movie's, like, a very good character study. Absolutely. Like, it does a very good job exploring... Um, you know the the different situations of its of its main cast, uh, and it puts them in interesting situations where they have to, you know, work their way through in a number of ways. They're kind of put up uh, against a rock in a hard place, and they have to pick which way they want to go. Um, you know, the rock or the hard place. So um, eventually, they they wind up picking the hard place, and you'll have to see. Uh, what that what that is, um, but I, I don't know. I, I'm starting to really like character studies. It's it's very, very cool way to to make a film. No, I gr- I agree. I wholeheartedly agree because not only is it the, you know, I think they're master classes if done properly. 
right? Yeah. Like it's showing you, showing off your talent, right? Like what you can do to embody somebody else. Right? Yeah. Not just be like, hey, you play this rich kid, uh, that's it. Right? Yeah. Or like, oh, you're going to f- jump and we're going to then mate her and post, make it look like you flew. Yeah. You know? So it's like they're more grounded, more realistic. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Oh. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, a tale about brothers... Uh, that's a little bit of a dark ride. It is an excellent, excellent film. Yeah. You know, it's a really well done, grounded film. Um, I hope I hope there's more buzz about it, right? Uh, with the Golden Globes and Academy Awards coming up, you know, it wouldn't hurt to see something like this up there. Yeah. And uh, Jack Jack O'Connell, Charlie Hanan, all of the Jonathan Majors, and Jessica Barden, all fantastic. Yeah. All fantastic. No, it was a great film. Uh, definitely watch it. I, I have nothing really bad to say, um, just in general. You know, it'll surprise you, so definitely pick it up. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time. This has been the Welch Review. <laughs>